Everybody, my name is Justin Vogel, and I get to serve at River Church as the Prophetstown campus pastor. And I'm a part of our teaching team, and I wanted to welcome you today from wherever you're watching. Uh, today, we're going to be kicking off a series, a brand new series called Ready, Set, Rest. And I really love this title because I think so many of us live in a ready, set, go mindset. We're always rushing from one thing to the next, or we're gearing up and preparing for the next thing before we've even finished the first thing. And so often in our ready, set, go mindset, we miss out on something that God has called us to, which is biblical rest. And so for the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about what biblical rest looks like and how we can become refreshed. I wonder how many of you today would would feel like, man, that's me. I really want to become refreshed. I'm sure most of us, if not all of us, feel that feeling. I want to be refreshed personally. And I wonder if you can relate to this. My wife, China, and I found ourselves in in some pretty challenging seasons in the past year. And and a time comes to mind where, where it felt like we were profoundly lacking rest. Let me just tell you, 2019 was a crazy year for us. Okay, we experienced some pretty heavy loss and ongoing sickness. There were some low parts of the year. There's also some great, wonderful high parts. We got to launch this new campus and have a second baby, but we found that we kept looking to the next season to give us rest. I remember uh, this kind of course throughout the year where I, where I would say to myself, you know, maybe after Easter, you know, once we get past Easter, you know, I had pneumonia. So, so once I feel better, then, then I'll be able to rest. You know, once we get past the funeral. Once our team is trained, then, then we'll be able to rest. Or, you know, maybe once we get launched in P-Town, then it's going to feel, you know, we're going to get rest. I don't know what I was thinking, but there was even a season where I was thinking, you know, once the baby comes, like, what was I thinking with that one, really? Once the baby comes, then I'll be able to get rest. I, I don't know. But we kept looking to the next season to give us rest, and the next season never brought it. And then there was a, a few weeks where both of us kept saying, you know, if I could just get some more sleep, I just, I just need some sleep. So we started really for the course of a few weeks to go to bed earlier and earlier and like get eight, nine, 10 hours in bed and sleep. And we, and we would wake up and we still didn't feel rested. And so we took a few days off and, and man, we didn't do anything. We watched TV, we, we played games and somehow we still felt exhausted. None of these things were bringing the rest that we so badly needed because the truth is that real lasting rest, it doesn't come from those things. I want you to follow along with me. Jeremiah 12 verse five says, if racing against mere men makes you tired, how will you race against horses? If you're stumbling and falling on on the open flat ground, what are you gonna do in the thickets near the Jordan? Church, you need to know that there's no guarantee that the next season is going to be easier. In fact, it might be a lot harder. Uh, We've all learned this lesson in 2020. It seems like it keeps getting tougher and new challenges. The next season's not bringing rest. So if you can't get rested now, what's going to happen when times get tougher? Like you can't count on the next season to bring your rest. And you can't count on sleep alone for rest. Now, sleep is good and You obviously need to do that. A wise pastor once told me that sometimes the most godly thing you can do is just stop and take a nap. And to that, I say, amen, hallelujah. But but the kind of rest that you need, rest for your soul, you can't get that just by sleeping. I want you to think of the example of, of the Lord. God rested after creation. He got nourishing rest, but he doesn't sleep. Psalm 121 says, indeed, he who watches over Israel, God, will neither slumber nor sleep. Sleep does not necessarily equal rest. And rest isn't just in leisure. Like, have you ever gotten back from a vacation and you're like, man, I need a break after that. Like, I need to take a couple days off to recover from my time off. 
I think about it, you know, all kinds of worldly people that, that I know who, who spend leisure time most of their life. They're, they're in leisure. They're, they're almost living idle lives. But the Bible says that they can never enter into God's rest. God says in Isaiah 48, 22, that there's no peace for the wicked. So if leisure can't give it to you, and if sleep can't give it to you, and if this rest doesn't come in the next season, then how can you get real rest? Have you ever wondered that? Man, how can you have rest in the middle of the trial? How can you have rest before the season gets easier, before your circumstances change? China and I found ourselves asking those questions last year, and I, and I really think 2019 had, taught, had really taught us this, this key uh, lesson. And it's our key thought for today. If you're taking notes, I want you to write it down that rest without Jesus isn't rest at all. Church, you need to hear that rest without Jesus isn't rest at all. I want you to get that into your heart because somehow we had drifted away from that knowledge. Rest without Jesus, man, that's, that's not any kind of rest. And Jesus had all sorts of amazing things to say about rest. And I really wanna focus our time on this scripture in Matthew chapter 11. Man, it's become this, this pillar that I can lean on. Listen to what Jesus has to say. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Man, I, I just love that. I love the, the assurance and the promise in his words. Man, how many of you in this season, maybe you feel a little weary and burdened? You feel a little bit tired and, and loaded down. I know many of us have felt like this this past couple months. Jesus says, if you're weary and burdened, come to me. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. He says, and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And there's so much truth and life in this scripture. Jesus, he really gives us three directions, three commands that we need to obey in order to receive his rest. The first thing that Jesus says is come to me. Jesus very simply says like, come and, and spend time with me. You have to, to come to him, to connect your heart with him in order to receive this rest. And if you want to go deeper and, uh, and learn the practicalities of how you can do this, I want you to listen to a sermon that we preached two weeks ago called Maturity in the Unity Series. We talk all about how to spend time with, with Jesus in the word and in prayer. But the truth is, if we want rest, we need to spend time with Jesus, and just a reminder that the Sabbath, right, the one day a week that God commands us to rest, it's not complete without spending time with Jesus. I know so many of us, we, we go through our week and, and on that day, maybe we rest away from our jobs, but we should never rest away from our Savior. You can rest from your job, do that on the Sabbath, don't, but don't rest away from your Savior because real rest comes from Jesus, He's the giver of rest. He says, come to me and I'll give it to you. And here's what I want you to know. When Jesus says, come to me, if you're taking notes, God's rest comes in his presence and from his promise. God's rest comes in his presence from his promise because real God-blessed rest, it's a gift. Like you can't achieve it somehow. You can't just like earn it and arrive at some place where rest is there. No, it has to be given. It's a gift and it only comes from him. I love Isaiah chapter 40 and I want you to follow along with me what it says here in verse 28. It says, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. Look at this. It says, he gives strength to the weary, and he increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Church, God's rest comes in his presence. You've got to come to him. You've got to seek him and spend time with him. And it comes from his promise. And you need to know that is something that you can put your hope in because the Lord never fails. Not a single promise of his will ever fail. And when you do, when you hope in him, he'll renew your strength as you put that hope in him. He says, come to me. 
and I will give you rest because rest without Jesus isn't rest at all. The next direction that Jesus gives us in this portion of scripture is this. He says, he says take my yoke upon you. Now I've got a picture of a yoke I want you to see. You're gonna see these two oxen that are connected by this piece of wood. You'll see it in the picture there. A yoke is a farm implement that's used to join two animals and to connect them to the reins, to connect them to the load. A yoke was, was made of wood and it's this, this hand-carved, uh, really piece of, of craftsmanship, custom made to fit the neck and the shoulders of whatever animal it is to prevent pain or discomfort. And a yoke exists for work. Like that's, that's the reason. It joins them together, the two animals, so they can pull. And Jesus, he says, take my yoke upon you. And maybe you're a little bit confused thinking about this sermon about rest and we're talking about work. Like, are you saying that we need to work in order to find this rest? Well, you need to know that a big part of biblical godly rest is preceded by doing the work of the Father. And it's preceded by accomplishing his purposes for us. And, and I think that this kind of makes sense to us when we begin to think of the satisfaction that comes from working hard and accomplishing something. Man, I remember as a little kid uh, growing up on the farm working with my dad, we were cutting down trees and, and we were sitting on this log and, and I said, dad, what, wouldn't it be so much better if we could just snap our fingers and have all of this done? Like if, if we could just boom and be done with it all. My dad objected. He's like, no, absolutely not. My, my dad started to say, no, then I wouldn't have gotten to spend this time with you. We got to get outside and work hard and we got to exercise and, and now we get to sit on the porch and drink iced tea and look at all the work we've accomplished. You see, there's a satisfaction that wells up inside of you when you finish the work. There's a deeper rest that comes from fulfilling your purpose. And man, I can tell you that this weekend after I'm done preaching, man, I'm gonna have some special rest. I'm going to go home, I'm going to snuggle up with my family, and I'm going to take a nap. And that special rest is going to come because I've fulfilled my purpose in the Lord this week. I've accomplished my purpose. I've fulfilled the task. And we need to do the work of God in order to have the real, prevailing, lasting rest of God. And here's what I want you to know. When Jesus says, take my yoke upon you, God's rest follows a purpose fulfilled and a project completed. If you're taking notes, write that down. God's rest follows this fulfilled purpose and this completed project. Jesus, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath and Jesus went to church. Like, like, like who knew? And just a side note, I want you to remember the Sabbath rest, it's not a suggestion. It's, it's a command from God. And to neglect that is to sin against God. So don't neglect Sabbath rest. But we see this picture of Jesus on the Sabbath in Luke 4. It says, on the Sabbath day, Jesus went into the synagogue, as was his custom, and he stood up to read. I want you to think about this with me. Jesus observed the Sabbath, and at the same time, he was invo involved. Like, Jesus didn't just go to church to be a consumer, to, to, to get something out of it. Jesus contributed Jesus taught the scriptures to the people, and he used his gifts and abilities to accomplish his God-given purpose. And, and many of you know this feeling, like those of you who wake up every, every weekend, you get up early, you come in and you're, you're serving at church. Man, there's a special rest that comes when we fulfill our purpose. Jesus had a lot to say about this work that we do for the Lord. I love what he says in, in John chapter four. He says, my food, Jesus says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Jesus says that, that doing this work feeds him, like it sustains him, it nourishes him. And, and you know what this is like. If you served during the Love My City series last year, like you, you, you worked hard and you may have left dirty and, and sweaty and maybe you had some holes in your clothes, but you left nourished because you got to refresh other people. Jesus says that fulfilling our, our purpose brings a nourishing rest, doing the work of God. Listen, it's a blessing. And what happens uh, in Proverbs 11 is this. It says, a generous person will prosper and whoever refreshes others will themselves be refreshed. Church, when you're generous with your time, when you're generous with your, your talents and your finances, when you're generous with your, your energy and you refresh others, 
God promises to refresh you in return. There, there's rest in that. I love what, what Jesus says to his parents when they found him at the temple. He's a 12-year-old. They were looking for him. They found him in the temple in Luke 2, 49. Jesus says, don't you know? He says, I must be about my father's business. Jesus was saying, like, I was made for this, to be in the temple. I, I was made for this work, for this purpose. And the truth is, man, you and I are made for it too. Look at what Paul says in Ephesians 2.10. He says, we are God's handiwork, his workmanship, his masterpiece creation, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. That's close to our purpose. That, that's it, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You were made for the work of the ministry. And when you do it, God opens the door for anointed biblical rest on your life. Listen, rest isn't, isn't just all about leisure time and being away from the work. It's not all about vacation or checking out. I, I can tell you just in my experience, some of the most unrestful times in my life have been when I've come home and checked out in front of the TV every night. Church, you need to know it. God's rest follows a purpose fulfilled and a project completed. I love the scripture that we're looking at today. Jesus has come to me. All of you who are weary, and carrying heavy burdens. And he says, I will give you rest. That was the first thing. The second thing he said was, take my yoke upon you. And thirdly, Jesus says, let me teach you. Jesus says, let me teach you because I'm gentle. I'm humble. I'm gentle in heart. And he says, you will find rest for your souls. Like, listen, he's saying like, like, I'm not hard to please. I, I'm not stern. I, I, I'm gentle. I, I want to teach you. Jesus says, I, I want to lift off those old, heavy, ill-fitting burdens because he says, my yoke is easy and the burden that I give you is light. Jesus says, I want you to learn from me. He wants you next to him in the yoke for this reason so you can learn. I want to tell you a little bit more about the yoke here. Two oxen are chosen to share a yoke. The first is an older seasoned ox. Okay, he's trained, he's hardy, he's strong from, from years of doing the routine work. He knows, he knows the plan. And the second ox is a, is a younger ox, and he's got potential, but he's inexperienced. The young ox always wants to go fast and kind of like jerks and lunges and turns from side to side and kind of tries to break through the yoke. But the older ox is strong and steady and he pulls in such a way that he can go the distance. He's oriented for endurance and he's not exhausted at the end of the day. Listen, by spending time in the yoke together, the elder trains the younger. And not only that, but the experienced one, the, the elder, the strong ox pulls harder to bear the majority of the, lower, the load. And since the older one is, is in the lead, the younger ox doesn't have to wonder what to do. He gets to learn. He learns from his mentor and he gains the knowledge and skill to do the work and eventually to teach others to do the work as well. There's this loving spiritual mentorship, this picture that Jesus painted that happens inside the yoke. This very much resembles discipleship. Listen, Jesus is strong and steady and patient. He's the best teacher you could ever ask for. And he invites us to come and learn from him. And here's what I want you to know. When Jesus says, let me teach you, you need to know that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. How many of you have ever heard somebody say something like this? That, that it's not necessarily the weight that you carry but the way that you carry it. Like we know this from experience, man, I can carry more if I'm carrying it the right way. Any good Boy Scout can show you how to set up your backpack so you're balanced and comfortable. Like the truth is you can carry way more, way further when you're carrying the weight the right way. And you need to know today the same is true of life. Jesus wants to help you carry the weight of this life in such a way that you can live freely and lightly no matter what your circumstances are. That's why Jesus says in the Bible, like, fear not, I've overcome the world. Like, he's gonna pull the load. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. You need to know Jesus has already done it. He's already won the victory and our rest, it's all in him. But if we yoke ourselves to the wrong things, our burdens become heavy and they don't fit right anymore. And it's hard to carry them the right way. And it's easy to get distracted and injured trying to carry the weight of life on your own the wrong way. 
And when we're yoked to the wrong things, we get worn out and tired by carrying any amount of weight. You know, if, if I could just get more sleep, just a little bit more shut. If, if, if I could just get some more time off, if I could just get away from work, you know, if I, if I can just make it past this season, we go on and on, but that's not what God has in store for you. Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, church, he only asks us to be in the yoke with him and learn from him. He's gonna do the heavy lift him. Jesus is gonna do the hard pulling. And when you're in the yoke, spending time with him, and when you're letting him lead, he'll take care of it. Like he'll bring you from a place of rest through the work into an even greater place of rest. And that place of rest is not dependent on your circumstances. That rest depends on the unfailing promises of an unfailing God. It's a guarantee, church. I want you to look at what the Bible says in Psalm 23. I think this, this really describes, it paints this beautiful picture of our shepherd, but it also shows us what it looks like to be yoked or joined together with Jesus. Psalm 23, verse one, the Lord is my shepherd. He says, I lack nothing. He's the one that makes me lie down in green pastures. He's the one that leads me beside the quiet waters. He's the one that refreshes my soul. Church, God wants rest for you. And he knows how to lead you into it if you'll only follow and learn from him. It goes on, it says, he's the one that guides me along the right paths for his namesake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me, Lord. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Church, even in the darkest valley, there's rest to be had when you're yoked to Jesus. And I know some of you are in a dark valley right now. I know some of you, you don't know where the money's gonna come from. You, maybe you've been out of work or you don't know what, what are we gonna do with the kids if we can't go back to school and, and that there's no, I'm in this dark valley and you need to know that without Jesus, man, there's no rest in that valley. There's no comfort because rest without Jesus isn't rest at all. But I want you to take heart today because even there, even in the darkest valley, you don't have to fear Man, you can live with peace and rest when you're joined with Jesus. There's peace in not having to toil and labor and try to figure it out all on our own. There's assurance as we follow his lead. It's a promise. He says, I will give you rest because he's good and he's loving and he's patient with you and he's wise and experienced. Listen, Jesus has a hand carved yoke for you and he wants you to join him in it. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light, says the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He says that to you. And I hope this picture is ministering to you today. Jesus invites you to come. I wanna look at one more example in scripture as we close. It's in Isaiah Chapter 55, it's, it's a parallel passage. And I, I love how this passage says it. It says it this way. Come to me, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. It's not gonna cost you anything. And then he asks this question. He says, why spend money on what is not bread? And why spend your labor on what doesn't satisfy? Church, don't put your hope in the next season. Don't put your hope in a little extra sleep or a little bit more downtime. No, God says, listen, listen to me and eat what is good. And you will delight in the richest affair. God says there's, there's something that satisfies if we'll only listen. If we'll only come to him. God has food and nourishment for you. He's got refreshing and he's got rest for you when you come to him. So church, come to Jesus for rest this week because rest without Jesus, it isn't rest at all. Would you bow your heads with me as we close in prayer? Father God, I thank you for your invitation to rest. God, I thank you for your invitation to come and to spend time with you. Lord, I thank you that, that you're the one who's gonna lead us in this process. And our only job is to take that yoke on 
and to follow your lead. That, Lord, we just rest in learning from you. So, Lord, I I pray that you would whet our appetite this week. God, that that we would want to come to you. God, that we would want this refreshing, this, this lasting rest as we come and spend time at the feet of Jesus. As we continue to pray, I I want to lead you through this this process. And I wonder if you just open up your hearts and listen for a few more minutes. You know, in ancient culture, the word yoke was a term that was used to describe submission. So if somebody was yoked to someone, it was communicating that they were in submission to that person or in submission to that thing. And I want you to know today that everybody has a yoke. I want to ask you, what are you yoked to? In this time of prayer where you got your head bounds and you're wondering, just ask yourself that question, what am I yoked to? And all of us are submitted to things, whether we're intentional about them or not. Romans chapter six says that you're a slave to whomever you obey. So what it is, what is it that you're obeying? What are you yoked to? For you, it could be another person and maybe you're listening to them above the voice of God. Or maybe you're yoked to a life pursuit and and it's determining the course of your life and it's deciding all of your decisions for you. Or maybe you're submitted and you're yoked to yourself doing whatever you want, whenever you want, or trying to do it on your own. Listen, Jesus says that's not where the rest comes from. When Jesus says, take my yoke upon you, he meant that we are to submit to him every day in every way, following his lead, submitted to the strong, wise Savior so he can carry the load. And listen, when you submit to him, he promises to give you rest. Church, we need to be yoked with Jesus. So whatever it is that that you're yoked to, if it's not Jesus alone, I want you to hold that up before the Lord. Imagine holding it up to him and just praying, Jesus, help me come out from under this yoke. Jesus, is is there some lie that I'm believing that brings me under this yoke? Jesus, what is that lie? Maybe you'd go a step further and ask, Jesus, when did I start believing that lie? Maybe as you reflect, you, you would ask, Jesus, what truth do you want me to know instead? As you begin to ponder this and as we continue to pray for the next few moments, I want to ask you to just sit sit with the Lord and and wrestle these questions and ask, Jesus, would you take this heavy, ill-fitting yoke off my shoulders and help me to come under submission to you? Man, I, I just want you to rest in that moment and pray that prayer. I want to continue for those of you, maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Maybe you feel like you're living life constantly, consistently carrying a a heavy burden. You're weighed down. I want you to know that your creator has something so much better for you. This weight, this lack of rest, it comes from disconnection from him. When we're disconnected with our father, we get tired and weary and worn out because you were created for connection with him. You were created for a relationship with the Father. But all of us in some some way, at some time, we chose our own way. We chose sin. We rebelled against God and it broke that relationship. There, There was a fracture there. And we began to feel the weight of that sin. We began to carry those burdens, the burden of guilt and shame. And no matter what we try, we can't escape that. That's the bad news that we're separated from God by sin, and it's an eternal consequence. But the good news is this, that God loves you so much. He wants to be with you in relationships so much that God substituted his son, Jesus, for you. He sent Jesus, living a, a perfect, sinless life, to go to the cross to be a worthy sacrifice. And listen, Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He carries that burden. The Bible says the punishment that brought us peace with God was upon Jesus. 
Jesus is the one that will carry those burdens away. Jesus is the one that will carry that sin away. Jesus is the one that will restore you in right relationship with your Father where you can be rested, where you can be refreshed and nourished in the presence of God himself. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you're feeling broken down, listen, you're here for this reason, to begin a relationship with him. And you can do that by praying this prayer in just a a few moments, but don't let it stop here. I believe this is just the beginning of all that God has in store for you. So if you'd bow your heads with me and you want to begin a relationship with Jesus, pray along, pray, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I need a savior. Jesus, I'm, I'm weary. Jesus, I'm, I'm carrying a heavy burden. Jesus, would you lift the burden of sin off my shoulders? Jesus, I believe you died for me to pay for my sin and you rose again to give me life. So Jesus, help me to come under your yoke of life. Jesus, help me to live with you and for you spending time with you, getting refreshed in your presence. God, that I can live for my Savior for all of my days, freely and lightly. Jesus, thank you for saving me. And it's in your name I pray. Amen.